Hello, viewer, and welcome to Spotlight here on Hope TV, where you look and leave. And we always appreciate very much uh, the, when you join us on this program. And thank you also for your feedback, because your feedback keeps us improving. And in the last few weeks, we've been talking about trauma healing and uh, lots of feedback from you about how these programs uh, have been helpful um, in your life and in your understanding. So we are thankful to Bible Society of Kenya uh, for bringing us this series of programs on trauma healing. And on this program tonight, uh, we again continue with this series uh, of trauma healing. And we are talking about care for the caregiver. Mm. Well, once in a while, uh, all of us will find ourselves in a place where we have to take care of a person who is not able to take care of themselves. No one is exempt from that experience. So it's important for us to uh, just tune into this conversation to just know more about the care for a caregiver. Others who are watching this program are already in that place of caregiving and you've been for a long time. And sometimes you're wondering, I mean, how do I hack this? How do I continue with this? This program is for all of us. Care for the caregiver. And again, we are glad uh, to have with us uh, trauma healing facilitators uh, from the Bible Society of Kenya. I want to welcome again uh, Gladys Kibui, uh, who now we can confidently call master facilitator <laughs> because you've been the most frequent here and your insights are always very practical and very uh, helpful. So welcome again. Thank you. And uh, fresh uh, on this panel today uh, is Anne Washuka, uh, who is also the head of programs at the Bible Society of Kenya and also a trauma healing facilitator. So welcome. Thank you. We're happy to have you. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. All right. And viewer, as we continue with this conversation, do engage us uh, on our social media platforms. Uh, that's on Facebook and also uh, on uh, YouTube. And also do text us on 22232. Uh, that's our text message line. We'll be glad to hear about your experiences and your thoughts about this very important experience in life, caregiving. And just to uh, refresh us a little bit, um, uh, Anne, uh, Bible Society of Kenya has really done an amazing work to bring us this series. And I know that there are many programs uh, at Bible Society of Kenya. This is one of them. Yeah. Uh, just you, maybe you can tell our viewers again about what programs are there yeah. at Bible Society of Kenya. We know the Bibles definitely, you know. Yeah. But tell us more about what happens at the Bible Society of Kenya. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. As um, you have clearly said, uh, Bible Society of Kenya is known widely uh, about Bibles, you know, uh, availing Bibles to the Kenyan uh, population, uh, and that's what people know us uh, for. But beyond that, we are doing a lot in the country and even beyond. And um, I'll just start by saying, talking about our vision. Our vision at Bible Society of Kenya is a people transformed by the use of the Holy Scriptures. And so to be able to achieve this vision, we were registered in the 1970s uh, um, as an sectarian organization, non-denominational organization, which means that uh, we work with all churches and all individuals that affiliate uh, with the Bible or use the Bible as their reference. And um, we are a membership organization partnering with different individuals and churches and uh, parachurch organizations to do the work that we do. Mm -hmm. So our mandate is to share the good news um, to everyone uh, to, in a way that they can be able to understand. And so we do this by one, translating the Bible from its original languages to the languages that we have in Kenya. In Kenya, we have over 50 mother tongue languages. And so um, it's our desire that every person can be able to have a Bible for themselves in their mother tongue language. Because we know uh, uh, very well that in our country, not everyone is able to understand the English and the Swahili Bible. And so we have done over 25 Bibles and the work is going on. Um, and then beyond the translation and distributing the Bibles to where people can get them, in the bookshops, uh, in the various churches, we have different uh, points where people can get the Bible. But in addition to that, we have programs that are designed to advocate for the Word of God and to facilitate scripture uh, engagement. 
these programs are like this program trauma healing where we are reaching out to people with the word of God and mental health principles to be able to bring back hope to people who may have lost hope because of various things that we, we uh, experience in life. We have another program that is so good for the church. It's called Faith Comes by Hearing. This program helps the church to be able to um, enhance Bible study so that the congregants of the churches can be able to be well, um, uh, deeply and rooted in the word of God. And so we encourage the churches to form listening groups and uh, we facilitate, um, we help them with uh, what we call talking Bibles. It's the Bible recorded in gadgets mm -hmm. that they can be able to easily listen to the word of God. So it's a good program for people who are literate or semi-illiterate or even people who may not have time to be able to read and study the word of God. We have another program that is targeting young people. It's called ABLI, African Biblical Leadership Initiative. Mm -hmm. This program uh, mentors young people, especially those who aspire to be leaders. And what we are doing in this program is to help them to um, have that transformational kind of leadership and to have uh, a biblical way of understanding how to be a leader who is God-fearing, mm -hmm. instilling biblical values uh, in a leader, in a young person, so that uh, our hope is that they will be able to uh, influence people, uh, other young people in their spaces. Mm -hmm. And so we are taking them through a seven um, month course and also linking them with mentors that are drawn from different professions, from churches, from the marketplace, and they are really doing amazing things. So we have very many of them that have already graduated from the program, which started way back in, the tw in 2016. Mm -hmm. We have other programs for children that are implemented in schools. Uh, in the schools, we are uh, working with other partners to implement the program for pastoral instruction, which is PPI. Most of us have gone through PPI in schools, and maybe that's where we started growing um, spiritually and in our faith. And we also have another program that is so attractive to young children. It's a Bible telling, it's a storytelling program called Open the Book, where we mm -hmm. encourage the children to open the Bible. And so we have volunteers who are trained on how to dramatize Bible stories in schools and just help these children to understand the Bible from beginning to the end. Mm -hmm. We have another program where we target marginalized uh, children in schools because, you know, in Kenya, we do uh, the religious education uh, studies subjects. And uh, so in primary, they are required to have the Good News Bible. And in high school, they are required to have the Revised Standard Version Bible. And so we provide a free Bible for any child who is from a marginalized uh, community. Uh, we target uh, places like Trokana, places like the, uh, some parts of Maasai where parents may not have be able to afford a Bible. And even in uh, our, some of our areas, even in Nairobi and other places. So we give free Bibles to such schools. Mm -hmm. um, so we have another program that reaches out to people who are struggling with uh, drugs, addictions, uh, especially alcohol. This program is aimed at helping to uh, help them as they walk the journey of recovery, restoring their hope through the word of God. It's called Tackling Alcoholism. And uh, it's a, it's a family-based approach where we reach out to the family and we work with the family uh, to see how can we be able to provide an environment that will encourage this person who is struggling with addiction to start a recovery journey. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have another program called Literacy for Women in Africa. Mm -hmm. it's, um, it's an adult education program. And uh, we are implementing this program in the ASAL areas, arid and semi-arid areas, like Trokana, where we have quite a number of adults who have not had a chance to go to school. And so even when we give them their Trokana Bible, for example, they may not be able to read it. And so we are doing adult education just to equip them with basic literacy and numeracy skills so that they can be able to read the word of God mm -hmm. and build that, be able to engage better. In, in their in their communities those are some of the programs that we are implementing it's quite a lot yes quite a lot at, happening at uh bible society of kenya and one of the things that uh one can easily appreciate is that uh in addition to translating and distributing the bible that you have actually real ways where you make the bible and its truths practical mm -hmm. in ways that transform the community yeah and that's really uh commendable thank you uh, and uh I mean, those, those, those are the, that, that's one of the places one would say, um, long live, you know, BSK. You know? Amen. <laughs> Amen to that. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, the trauma healing is one of the programs that have, have been very transformative even here, mm. uh, as uh, we've interacted with our viewers. And uh, a caregiver, right? A caregiver. Sometimes they are forgotten. Sometimes a person, um, here is a wife, for instance. Mm. And uh, your husband has gotten into a bedridden state. 
uh, and there is no light as to when he will rise. In fact, sometimes uh, a doctor may say, this is for the long haul. Mm -hmm. And people take it that, oh, the wife is, mm -hmm. uh, is the one who should be here. Yeah. So year in, year out, they are always there. And because it's a wifely duty, you know, you're not supposed to complain. Because mm. once you complain then, um, it's seen as if, hmm, what are you wishing? Mm. You know, mm -hmm. your husband. <laughs> and, and so it, it's, and it ha this scenario you know, happens in so many forms, yeah. right? Mm. And so uh, that's why it's important for us now, uh, Gladys, to uh, maybe you can explain to us who qualifies to be called a caregiver. Thank you. Um, as you said at the introduction, Caregiver is not a professional title for some people mm. in some corner. And you have given a light example. A parent, uh, a wife who is taking care of a, a disabled or a, a husband who has chronic illness mm. qualifies to be called a caregiver. A mother or parents who have children with a disability, they qualify to be caregivers. Teachers mm -hmm. uh, of preschools, nurses, all those helping professions. Mm they qualify. But in our case, as far as trauma healing is concerned, we refer to the caregiver as this person who has been equipped mm -hmm. to listen to other people mm. so that they can be able to clean their hearts mm -hmm. of the guilt, of the sin, and of the painful things that they have gone through. Mm -hmm. That person, we refer to them as a caregiver. Mm. They take care of people's hearthoods. Mm -hmm. That's why we, we are talking about a caregiver in relation to trauma healing. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and uh, you know, talking about again the caregiver here, um, what are some of the things that in that caregiving process would cause somebody to be overloaded? Okay, over, uh, to be overloaded, it means that you are so busy, you don't have time uh, for yourself, mm -hmm. you are very busy taking care of that disabled child, mm -hmm. that chronically sick husband, that aged parent, mm -hmm. that uh, uh, person with a certain disability, mm -hmm. or you are a teacher and you have all those programs that you have been given to complete by this date, some deadlines, that you come to neglect yourself. You have mm -hmm. no time for yourself. Mm -hmm. we, you become an overloaded person. Mm -hmm. And we can see that you are overloaded by you have agar outbursts. Mm. You start feeling so tired and exhausted. You start losing sleep. And you also uh, start doubting the existence of God. Mm. You start believing the lies of Satan and all those, these kind of things because you don't have time for your own. Mm. Those, that is what we call an overloaded person. Okay. Yeah. And I'm sure that uh, viewer, as you engage at this conversation, maybe you're feeling overloaded, um, maybe you're feeling overwhelmed, uh, maybe you can tell us about your experience by just responding to us there on our social media platforms, also text us on 22232, uh, just tell us a little bit about um, the feeling of being overloaded and what causes you also to be overloaded. Uh, and as you do that, uh, we have Anne here, and uh, sometimes we have a technical name for the word we've been using here is trauma, right? Yeah. And uh, there's overloading here. Mm -hmm. Could that overloading uh, lead itself to some kind of trauma? Yes, it mm -hmm. can. And um, that's why we are talking about this in trauma healing. Mm -hmm. uh, because sometimes when a caregiver is taking care of someone, uh, for example, um, a caregiver who is taking care of an elderly person or like someone who has a long-term illness, they can get to a point where they see the pain of this person and they, they, they start feeling what this person is going through. And if they are not careful, they can start experiencing the same symptoms that this person is going through. When that happens, when you see the experiences, you listen to this person's pain and you don't have anywhere to, ta to take that pain, then it gets into you. And as a caregiver, you start experiencing the same symptoms. Mm. You know, you start behaving um, like a traumatized person. We talked about that uh, when we were discussing heart wounds mm. and, and looking at some of the symptoms that would indicate someone who has a, a, heart, a wound of their heart. And so when you start experiencing those kind of pains, then it's not as a result of a trauma that has directly come to you, but we call it a secondary trauma. Yeah, so secondary trauma is when you're experiencing um, uh, symptoms of trauma as a result of taking care of another person. Okay. Yeah. You know, um, as you're still at it, it's secondary 
um, trauma. Um, you know, there's some things you're not supposed to get tired about. Mm -hmm. There's some things you're not supposed to be overloaded about. Yeah. <laughs> like, you cannot be overloaded about taking care of your parent. Yes. It's a crime. Mm -hmm. Like, look at her, look at him. Mm -hmm. They are tired of taking care of their parent. Mm -hmm. It's like a crime, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so you can stay in this trauma state because of a certain societal expectation. Yes. Can you speak to that? Yeah. Um, of course, uh, we have been comparing uh, culture, what culture says, and the reality, and also what the Word of God says. Mm -hmm. And so the perspective of people is that you should not get tired, and you should not seem to be complaining, or you know, feeling like, or showing that you are getting tired about taking care of someone. But the reality is, you are a human being. Mm -hmm. You have emotions, you have feelings, and you have a body, and you have everything just like any other human being. Mm -hmm. So as much as you may continue doing it and you may you know, continue showing that you are okay, the reality is that you may not be okay. Mm -hmm. And so um, the, the, what we would propose is that when you start feeling that you know, it's not okay, then that is the time that you need to do something. Because what happens is that if you continue taking care of someone and you are, you are in pain yourself, you may not be able to give much to this person. Mm -hmm. You may end up actually hurting the, the person you're taking care of. Mm -hmm. And you'll be looking at some of the things that you know you can, you can do that will be harmful to the people that you actually are supposed to, are meant to be helping. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It yeah, makes me wonder also, and, and I'm bringing this to you, Gladys, what some, some things that those people who are overloaded would say, for instance? Um, some who start as I said, having aga outburst. Mm -hmm. I'm tired. I'm tired of being tired. Mm -hmm. And you know, those kind of things. I'm sick and tired of this. Mm -hmm. I'll not do it. When I'm the only one who is supposed to take care of this, mm -hmm. this parent only gave birth to me. Ooh. Was it my fault that this child was born disabled? Mm -hmm. Where is God? Mm -hmm. Why can't he take, take uh, charge here? Why is he not seeing what I'm going through? Mm -hmm. And uh, why is nobody caring? Why am I the only one who is responsible for this? Mm. And on and on and on. And the person can continue saying these things. Mm. Are they continuing to say these things? And so that's, yeah. that's already by itself a, a symptom that yeah. all, all is not well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then, uh, Gladys, there are some very difficult uh, people to take care of. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're doing your best, yeah. but they're saying you're doing nothing, mm -hmm. right? The person you're keep giving, you've done your best. Yeah. You know, take care of this person. Uh, could be a relative, could be somebody who is very close. Mm. And they keep saying, they call you names, you know. They become controlling, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. They become suspicious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I wonder whether then there could be like another level of trauma, you know, that <laughs> comes from the fact that the person you're taking care of has now become traumatizing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and that is why sometimes when you hear about somebody a caregiver who is actually abusing mm. physically, mm. emotionally, all those kind of abuses, you come to understand that this is a person who is overloaded or with secondary trauma, and that is the reaction. But one of the things that people should know, a caregiver should know, when somebody uh, is traumatized, the first symptom, as we said in um, the lesson number three, was anger. Mm. So the anger may not be necessarily out of what you are doing to them. It is their internal anger. It has nothing to do with you. So just allow it to pass. Don't personalize the anger of the person that you are taking care of. Mm -hmm. Because it's just a symptom of what they are going through. Mm. When you start personalizing it, now the mm. two of you will be at a very bad stage and nobody will help the other one. Mm -hmm. Just understand it's not personal. It's not against you, but it's just a symptom of trauma. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's difficult. Caregiving is, is hard. Yeah, it's hard and, work. Uh, and sometimes, as Africans, uh, we have prided mm -hmm. in the fact that we never take our elderly to old people's homes. We, yeah. You know, those, we, we, that's one of our prides, that mm. we don't do that. Yeah. Uh, sometimes we critique the Western society as if, you, you, how can you take your parent or yeah. somebody you love to a care of giving facility, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. as you continue with life? Mm -hmm. But uh, could it be that this trauma uh, that we're talking about here, mm -hmm. uh, on both there, because sometimes maybe the caregiver can traumatize, mm -hmm. you know, the one yeah. they're supposed to give, taking care of, 
the, the one they're taking care of and mm -hmm. the one who is take, being taken care of mm -hmm. can traumatize yeah. know, the yeah. caregiver. Yeah. Uh, could there be then a justification as to why mm -hmm. uh, those kind of caregiving homes exist? Um, yes, it can. Mm -hmm. uh, um, however, what I would say is that um, there is need to, you know, for the caregiver to accept the reality that uh, they may not be um, able to take care of this person or this individual mm -hmm. alone for a long time. Mm -hmm. And so they should be able to uh, identify and look at what are the support systems. Uh, it could be for other family members, it could be people, friends, and people who can be able to come in and, and support this caregiver as they take care of the, the person who is uh, they are taking care of. Mm -hmm. So the, the caregiver really needs to um, look and have support systems that will help them. And also if uh, they get to a point where they, they are now experiencing secondary trauma, then I think they need to look to work together with the families and identify then what, what is the best scenario, what is the mm -hmm. best, best way forward. We may not necessarily say that uh, taking, for example, an elderly to a home is a solution. Mm -hmm. It depends. So uh, we would encourage that um, the support system now comes in and comes up with a solution. What is the best way forward? Mm -hmm. For the caregivers, they may uh, have to identify where they need to debrief oftenly. Mm -hmm. And uh, every time they feel that they are experiencing the symptoms that you've talked about, they should have a way of going and, you know, pouring that to someone else mm -hmm. so that they can have someone who listens to them, someone who helps them to, you know, uh, to debrief from the pain, to debrief from the symptoms so that they can keep going. Mm -hmm. And um, we will also be looking at how can we be able to keep the caregiver going mm -hmm. because, as you have said, the caregiver needs to keep going. As long as the person who needs to be taken care of is still there, mm -hmm. they have to keep going. But how can they ensure that they are strong enough to keep going? Okay. Yeah, because they have to, you know, um, take care of themselves for them to have something to give. You cannot give what you don't have. Mm -hmm. So for you to be able to take care of another person, you need to be well taken care of yourself. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a very uh, interesting uh, insight there. And uh, it also brings me to a question, uh, Gladys. Um, you start out well. Mm -hmm. You start out meaning well. You start out with a good heart. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take care of my spouse. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take care of my child. I'm going to take care of my, you know, uh, my parent to the end. You know, mm -hmm. like Peter saying, I'll be with you to the end. You know? <laughs> yes. And then... Uh, betraying somewhere down the line. Mm -hmm. but, uh, uh, but it ends up, I have seen many homes whereby they started mm -hmm. that way, yeah. but three years down the line, they end up commercializing it, mm -hmm. getting somebody who is paid mm -hmm. to do that work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, I mean, maybe can this trauma caregiver, one of the ways that, um, especially domestic, in a domestic situation, mm -hmm. could it be commercializing uh, this care uh, does it, in a, in a way, address the issue of, of um, family members having to, day to day, uh, go to a place where they are suffering secondary trauma? Um, I think I, I will just add to what Anne has said when it comes to having a support system. Mm. Having somebody whom you have employed. We have home care uh, nurses. Mm. We have people who, who are trained to take care of the elderly or the sick. Mm and they are, they are paid for that. What happens to the, to the Western world where they are taken to homes is because it's very expensive to afford somebody who will do that work. Mm. But in Africa, it's not expensive to have uh, such, a, such a person. And where it is very expensive, if that one is expensive, they cannot even have the expense of taking the person to, the, mm. to a elderly home or a home where they will be taken care of. Mm. So in, uh, there is nothing like commercializing that. Mm -hmm. it, you, we have to understand that these people who are hiring somebody to take care of this person, they need to continue with the life because if they are not continuing that life, they will not afford to take care of this one. Mm -hmm. So they have to get somebody to take care of this one as they continue looking for resources to take care of this one. Mm -hmm. And they give somebody. It comes to matters of specialization mm -hmm. as economists would tell us. Uh, division of labor and uh, specialization. So we have got to get somebody who is specialized in that care mm -hmm. and they pay that person to do exactly that. And we cannot pay them by staying at home as well mm. because now where will we get the money to pay them? Yeah. So it's just 
the same thing that is done in the Western, mm -hmm. it's been uh, in the Western countries, it's been done in Kenya, okay. in Africa. Mm -hmm. We just get somebody to support us in that. Yeah, and, and I think that's a very important cultural shift. Mm -hmm. So that when you go to a home and find that there is a nurse there mm. or somebody who is taking care of a person who needs care, mm -hmm. we should no longer see it as a, they're neglecting yeah. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. and so they are paying somebody to do the hard work, yeah. uh, it's really out of necessity yeah. uh, out of uh, to get a specialist to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, maybe we can uh, talk about, uh, uh, Anne, what would you say would be the most difficult thing mm -hmm. uh, that a caregiver faces? Mm. Mm. Yeah. Um, caregiving is not an easy task, as we, we are clearly um, saying. And, and some of the things that make it very difficult for a caregiver to keep going, one is that uh, sometimes caregivers may find that they are taking care of so many people at the same time. Um, in our African homes, for example, we have, um, you know, a, a parent who may be taking care of, you know, not just her, his or her own children, but also the extended family children. And so you may, you may realize that you are taking care of so many people and um, you know you are this one person who's, who is just getting drained and drained and drained. And that, that's one of the things that can make it very difficult when you have so many people that you're taking care of. Another example is um, what we are talking about, even those homes. Mm -hmm. You find that the workers, compared to the people that are in such homes, are so few. You go to our hospital facilities, you realize that uh, the workers, for example, nurses, are so few and yet they are taking care of so many people. And that can really be very difficult for such a caregiver. Another reason is that um, sometimes caregivers may be object of anger. As Gladys has indicated, one of the symptoms of people who, are, who have heart wounds or trauma is that they tend to project anger you know, to other people. And so if a caregiver is not careful, they might personalize that and think that, you know, this person hates me, this person does not appreciate what I'm doing for them. And so if you, you decide to take that and, you know, think that they are projecting that to you personally, then of course it will affect you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you may not be able to continue doing the good work that you're doing. Okay. Um, another, another thing that can make it very hard for a caregiver is when they, um, you know, they they feel that they enjoy the power. You know, as you have done the, uh, the caregiving, you may get to a point where you start enjoying being the center of attention. You know, it's like everybody looks at you, you know, or thinks that you are the one who can provide a solution. Um, I, I would give an example of, for example, our churches, where you have, you know, the pastor as the lead person, mm -hmm. and maybe the caregiver who is uh, looked upon by everyone in, that, in, in that, that church. And so even when a pastor has tried in, um, so much to have other people, delegated work to other people like the elders mm -hmm. um, or departmental heads, you realize that people still want to go to the pastor. And so that can make it very hard for a, such a pastor who everyone wants to come to them because they think this is the only person who can provide a solution. And um, that can make it really hard. Sometimes you may not even be conscious about it, mm -hmm. and yet you are getting fatigued, you are getting overloaded. Um, another reason that I would, uh, I would mention is um, when a caregiver neglects themselves. Mm. You know, they, they, you don't have time for yourself. You don't have time to take, you know, a break or to think about your own self. And so you realize that you are too much into, you know, taking care. You are too much into doing that good work that you are doing and until you forget yourself. Some of us caregivers don't even have time to eat. You know, you don't have time to do your own self-grooming because you are too much into um, the caregiving. Mm. So neglecting yourself um, and, you know, you, you, you might end up having problems, mm. spiritual problems, social problems, you know, and uh, start having relationship problems and many other problems. Okay. Yeah. Quite something there. And I think mm -hmm. the, 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 the area of a caregiving is coming out very strongly as a, a key space. Yeah. You know, uh, Gladys, you know, one of the things I would want us to engage once we come back uh, uh, from the break, it would sound funny, but it's important. Mm -hmm. There's some people who avoid mm -hmm. the situation of being caregivers. Like they don't yeah. want to do that, you know, <laughs> and they try to, they work so hard to yeah. avoid, mm -hmm. you know. No, no, you know, um, that's the work of the firstborn, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, the, that, that's what, if yeah. only the spouse can do that. Yeah. No, they, they work so hard to avoid it, mm -hmm. uh, but is it really avoidable? And uh, we'll talk about that uh, when we come mm -hmm. back from the break. Uh, viewer, we are talking about care for the caregiver. And maybe sometimes you also have felt overloaded uh, by the experience of caregiving. 
Uh, maybe just describe it to us by sending us a message on 22232. Also, let's hear what you have to say on social media pages. Again, we're talking about Care for the Caregiver, a series brought to us by the, by, by the Bible Society of Kenya. We're taking a short break. We'll be right back. Hope TV is now available on Go TV Channel 103, Zuku Channel 873, Signet Channel 817, and Star Times Channel 026. Enjoy our uplifting content and family friendly programming anytime. Hope TV, you look and live. Time Classics every Thursday at 11 a.m. Welcome back. Uh, this is Spotlight, and we are talking about care for the caregiver, a situation that all of us have to find ourselves uh, in at some point or other. And we are happy to, jo to be joined on this edition by Anne Washuka, who is the head of programs at the Bible Society of Kenya, and also a trauma healing facilitator, and also a Gladys Kibui, who is uh, also a trauma healing facilitator, a very important subject here of caregiving. And, and, and we were talking, Gladys, just before we went for the break, about caregiving avoid us. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. they want to run away from that. Mm -hmm. um, they want others to do it, you know, but they don't, you know, they don't want to do it themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, they want the firstborn to do it. They want the spouse to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, they want the neighbor to do it. Mm -hmm. But they don't. They want to safeguard themselves from that experience mm -hmm. of having to take care of another person especially in that kind of immobilized state. Mm -hmm. How would you, what would you say to this uh, caregiving avoiders? What I would say is that if you see, you find yourself in a situation where you don't want to take care of everybody, anybody else, mm -hmm. mostly those are people who don't even know how to take care of themselves mm -hmm. because it's just outright uh, common sense or human, human to think about that, if I'm in trouble, I want my neighbor to take care of me. Mm. And the Bible says it is in giving that we receive. What are you giving? And every one of us is here with something that is inherent in mm. us, mm. the mm. gift that is inherent in us. That is the way. It is not a professional thing, as I said when we are starting. Caregiving is not a professional thing. It's just what God has put in you, you are pouring on somebody else. Mm -hmm. So it's not something to avoid or think that this is the responsibility of firstborn, this is the responsibility of uh, the, my brother, the, the men in the family, their wives, they should be taking care of their mother, their mm -hmm. father in their old age. Or if it is, uh, as I started by giving an example of a uh, mother or parents of a child with a disability, they always think that is the mother's responsibility to take care of her. Mm. And in most of the uh, parents of disability, children with disability we have worked with, there is no man allowed. Mm -hmm. He took off immediately that they saw that this child is disabled, mm. they just take off. Mm. So it is not a responsibility above what God has created you to do. Mm -hmm. 
you're only supposed to stretch out a helping hand mm. and get that person to have a glass of water, a plate of food near them, warm clothes, just keep them clean with a mm. good environment, uh, and sit there with them and just listen to them as they, they tell you what they are feeling, as you share also the word of God. Mm. Mm. Get them to listen to the word of God. Read to them that word of God mm. and share with them what did you hear, what, what did you like, what didn't you like, what is it that you think that God, we can ask God to do for us, mm -hmm. what's mm -hmm. your greatest desire. They are human beings, mm. those, these people that you are taking care of. Yeah. So it's not something to avoid, it's not something to learn away from. And if you have found yourself learning away from caregiving, it's important to... Uh, take that concern to somebody else so that they can listen to you and see what is the origin of this. Mm. Are you somebody who was traumatized by caregiving? Mm -hmm. Are you somebody who watched caregiving and you thought that's not for me, I'll never do it. Mm -hmm. Get somebody to listen to you so that you can have that loving attitude towards anybody who needs care. Yeah, yeah. and uh, 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 I like the, 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 the explanation that, I mean, just come round and learn how to love, you know? Because mm -hmm. it will be, before long, it will, it will be you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Somebody else will t need to take care of you. Mm -hmm. And imagine that situation. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but, uh, and it's a culture, it's a widespread cultural experience, especially in urban areas, yeah. where we actually are neglecting mm. our parents. Yeah. We don't want to go that mile, yeah. you know? Mm. Uh, and it's a culture whereby even we don't want to take care of our spouses. When you when you get sick mm -hmm. in a way that you can't recover, mm -hmm. you know, then, uh, I mean, I begin to disappear, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, and uh, I mean, we have other priorities, mm -hmm. such that taking care of our beloveds, yeah. um, when they get into a, that kind of care needing situation, mm. it's no longer a priority for us, yeah. you know? Mm. Uh, and it's a culture. Yeah. Uh, but how would you speak to this culture? How, what, would, what would you say um, concerning this whole yeah. widespread practice, especially, especially amongst young people. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm. Unfortunately, that's how um, the reality of things. Uh, you find that um, in, in um, any kind of setting, like a family, only one person who may have the burden, mm. you know, to, to really take care of uh, the people that need care in that family. And you, you realize that everybody else will just take things for granted. Um, so what I would encourage caregivers to be aware of is that they can actually be subject of manipulation. Mm -hmm. People can really be manipulative. And you realize, that, like you've said, you'll always find this one person who becomes the victim. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody else, when there's a problem or when there's someone who needs to be taken care of, let's say um, the elderly parents, there'll be, the, people will always say, let's take them to Kulani, mm -hmm. you know, let's take them to Anne's home. Mm -hmm. You know, Anne is, a very, is very good with these things. So you, you need to be, uh, accept the reality that um, you can get tired. Mm -hmm. And so as a caregiver, if you feel that you're tired, you can call for a meeting. You can call the family together and let them know that, you know, yes, I've been doing this, but I think each one of us has a role to play. And it's the it's right thing to do, right? Yes, yeah. yes. And, and try to, um, in, 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 you know, in a, in, a, in a good way, delegate some of the roles. You know, agree who will be taking our mom to clinic, for example. Who will be, uh, you know, taking care of the food. Who will be taking care of this. So delegation of roles would make it easy for a caregiver. Mm. And would make the others to come to realization that they have a part to play when it mm. comes to caregiving. Okay. Yeah, so one of the ways I would encourage is identifying who can do what. And the strengths within the, 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 the setting, maybe if it's a family, who is good at what. And who can take what duty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and... And I think that's something that should be planted yeah. uh, at a very tender age. Mm -hmm. Exactly. In, in the parenting cycle. Yeah. And at one point or other, mm -hmm. uh, if it's uh, maybe even in the premarital counseling situation, mm -hmm. be prepared that at one point, mm -hmm. one of you may turn out to be a caregiver to the other. Mm -hmm. But there's also another situation, Gladys. Um, a situation whereby there are people willing to do it. You are the person being given care. And there are different people willing to take care of you. Mm -hmm. But then you are attached to one person, you know? Yeah. And so the, you are dependent to one person. And that mm -hmm. person, yeah, everyone, your brothers, sisters, uh, colleagues won't take care of this person, you, but you don't want them. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to, you want to uh, focus on only one person. You want to care from one person. 
uh, is there a situation whereby also those people were being taken care of mm -hmm. to the extent that they are able to understand they also need an education <laughs> the people who have been taken care mm -hmm. of yeah it's very true we need to get these people who are being taken care of it's not just sticking on one person mm -hmm. and putting everybody aside some others don't want that care you know that mm -hmm. they need care and they just retreat and they sit in a corner mm -hmm. and they want nobody to come near them mm -hmm. i want to take you to hospital i'm not going to any hospital I want to, to give you this medicine. I am not taking any medicine. And they, they become a real problem to everybody else. We have to understand that uh, when you reach that level of being taken care of, it is a situation where you not only have the physical ailment that is causing you to be taken care of, mm. that you are also hurt. You have also a hearthood. People need to take care, need to take care of the hearthood mm -hmm. so that this person can now become... Uh, a, a person who can listen, a person who can listen mm. so that they can understand that we are not going to burden one person. We are going to, each one of us will be taking a certain role. But when we try to force this service to this person, mm. we are just not going to get any breakthrough. Mm. So it's important to have that person healed, mm. the heart would first, mm. so that he can, uh, he or she can be ministered to or served by everybody else. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So it's, it's a, an important aspect there that it's not just the physical, mm. there's also an emotional wound that yeah. mm. you need to be conscious about the person you're taking care, mm -hmm. uh, care of, that you could be suffering multiple wounds yeah. Uh, yeah. and complexities. Uh, and, and most of the viewers now want to know, mm -hmm. and, and we've, we've talked about debriefing as mm. a way of um, a caregiver taking care of themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, what are the other ways uh, and that mm. uh, a caregiver uh, can and should mm. take care of themselves. Yeah. Um, I, I think this is very important, and I would like to quote Abraham Lincoln. Mm -hmm. um, he talks about, um, you know, a situation where our scenario where if he's um, given a task to cut down a tree, he says that um, if he's given six hours to cut down a tree, then he would take the first four hours uh, sharpening the axe and the rest of the hours, which is two hours, to cut down the tree. What does that mean for a caregiver? It means that for a caregiver, the, the better you prepare yourself, the better you take care of yourself, the easier it becomes to do the task of caregiving. So a caregiver needs to really do so much in terms of helping themselves to be you know, strong emotionally, physically, spiritually, so that they can have a lot to give and they can, they can be able to keep going as a caregiver. Mm. I would want to talk about also another scenario of, think about a knife, for example, the knives that we use in our, in our homes. Mm. And you know, when you buy this knife, it's very sharp and you know, strong enough to do the work. But as you continue using it, you get to a point where you need to keep sharpening this knife so that it can keep doing the work. What happens if you ignore sharpening the knife? Of course, what will happen is that uh, the person using that knife will really struggle and use a lot of energy, you know, and sometimes it's actually painful to use a blunt knife to, you know, to cut, for example, um, you know, cabbage, vegetables in the right. house. Yeah. Mm. And, and so thinking about a caregiver the same way, you can imagine a caregiver who has to drink themselves off and they have nothing to give. You know, they are tired, they are fatigued, they are loaded. What kind of, you know, care do you think they are giving to the, to the people they are taking care of? They will end up projecting more negative things than, you know, that giving love. And, you know, um, the book of Psalms uh, 1 talks about, you know, compares a caregiver or someone um, spiritually as a tree planted by the riverside. You know, they should always have something to give in season and out of season. So a caregiver should always have something to give because that's why they are a caregiver. Mm. But if they don't take care of themselves, they'll get to a point where they have nothing to give. And the only thing they can give is hatred, you know, um, complaining and things that will actually um, make it worse, the situation worse for the other person. So how then can a caregiver take care of themselves? One of the things is that a caregiver really needs to be well connected to God. We encourage that a caregiver should uh, allow themselves to allow the Lord to take care of them. In the Bible, um, there's a, the story of Elijah. Elijah got to a point where he was so tired 
that he wanted, actually he became, I always say that he became suicidal. You know, he went into a cave and he just wanted to die. It, things were just so bad for him. But in that low moment, we find God uh, providing for Elijah and, you know, taking care of Elijah to a point that he gets new strength to be able to move forward. The same way a caregiver is to get to that point where they allow God to take care of them. You know, just have their time with God, fellowship and, you know, have their devotion time with God. Just listen to what God is saying about different situations. When they feel they are so low and they are so down, they can seek, maybe um, talk to a pastor, you know, go to church, go to a fellowship and just refresh themselves so that God can continue to take care of of, of them. Um, we also see the scenario, a scenario in the New Testament when Jesus was with the disciples and, you know, there were a lot of people coming and Jesus tells the disciples that, uh, you know, we need to retreat from the crowd. We need to go and have some rest. Mm -hmm. You can imagine Jesus being um, the son of God and God and tells the disciple that we need to retreat and rest. What about us who are human beings? We need to get to, um, you know, to allow ourselves to have breaks, you know, to have to retreat from what we do and, you know, just have time uh, for, of our own, be, uh, between us and God, time to just rest, time, time to just reflect on our own lives. Another way of taking care of ourselves is um, sharing the burden with other people. You cannot do everything. And, you know, as much as you, some of us may be very passionate about taking care, you know, uh, giving the, uh, doing the caregiving work, we need to realize that we cannot do everything. So we need to identify, are there people who we can share that burden with? Sometimes it can be so hard, as we have said. Maybe it's becoming even painful to take care of someone who may not even appreciate what you're doing. Do you have people that you can confide in? Do you have people that um, you, know, you can go to and talk to about the pain that you're going through? So share, uh, caregivers need to have people they can share their burdens, their burdens with. Another thing is that caregivers also need to identify people that um, are skilled enough and qualified to be able to take up some of the loads that they have. Um, in, the, in the Bible, we see the, the, the story of Moses uh, in the Old Testament, when Moses was leading the Israelites to the promised land. And you know, um, this was a situation where Moses was doing everything. He is the one who was going to listen um, to God, what to tell the people, coming back and telling the people, organizing the people, leading the people, doing a, literally everything, until a point where the, the, the father-in-law came and you know, was able to observe that and advised Moses, can you identify among these men people who can be able to help you? So caregivers need to identify um, whatever they are doing. Are there people who can be able to take some of the tasks? Um, and we also recommend that as they um, help these people to take the, the task and to, you know, to do the, the duties that they allocate, make sure that the people you are delegating to are people who are actually able to do the work. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes, again, caregivers uh, delegate work to people who may not uh, be able to take up the task. So be careful that the people you are delegating to are well-trained, are well-equipped, mm -hmm. and skilled to be able to take to do the work. Mm -hmm. um, then the last, the last thing I can uh, say is that um, caregivers need to take time to, to do, you know, to take breaks, take leave. Take leave, you know, um, it's not a sin uh, to take leave and to take rest um, and ensure that uh, maybe you have some time to sleep well, you have some time to, you know, just have your own time, reflect about your own issues and just have your own personal time. Okay. Yeah, so take leave, take rest. Yeah, I, yeah. and I think this is a pure education for families, mm -hmm. uh, for units that have a person that they have to take, take care of yeah. uh, because caregivers most of the time don't understand what you're talking about, that mm. you can take leave. Yeah. Uh, they should share responsibilities, mm. that they should be aware of their own health yeah. uh, and well-being. I think mm. that this is really educative uh, and uh, we have uh, viewers who are responding to us. We are very uh, thankful for uh, your comments and just want to uh, read one here from Don Mwaruma uh, mm -hmm. who is saying a good discussion tonight. Uh, Anne and Gladys, mm -hmm. a viewer saying here it's a good discussion. So mm -hmm. thanks oh. for your insights and your and your mm -hmm. wisdom. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Don is saying that we experienced it. Mm -hmm. um, that is this uh, fatigue, mm -hmm. um, having to take care of another person mm -hmm. as a family. Mm -hmm. And we called for a meeting, just like mm -hmm. you're talking about. Mm -hmm. After after one of our sister, one of our sisters said she was tired. The same mm -hmm. thing we're talking about <laughs> yeah. here, and yeah. wanted someone to take over. Why? 
Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Because everyone was assuming that. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's her duty. Yeah. Uh, then uh, Don is not giving the whole story because uh, Don is saying, when my mom heard about that, mm-hmm. exclamation mark. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and I'm thinking that it's well, really taking yeah. care of your mom. Yeah. Uh, and, and I mean, that's, it's a reality that is sinking with so many people who mm-hmm. are viewing. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and as Annie was talking about, I mean, about taking a break mm-hmm. um, and about, you know, Jesus retreating. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I'm also thinking about how a caregiver mm-hmm. can also be oppressed by the same scriptures. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> don't grow weary of mm-hmm. doing good. <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, you will run and not mm-hmm. grow weary. Mm-hmm. You know? You will, your strength will be renewed, yeah. like the eagles. Yeah. You know, I mean, so it's, I mean, just just yeah. thinking that there are, there are places where uh, people can actually use the same scriptures yeah. to mm. um, lead people to secondary and maybe even other complicated tropes. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, maybe you can tell us, uh, Gladys, also other perspectives from the scriptures mm. that help the caregiver. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I just want to add one on when mm-hmm. Anna was talking about. Um, what Moses did or mm-hmm. what he was told to do is to be hearing from God and then let other people learn also how to teach this law mm-hmm. to the other people. Uh, most of the time, we neglect as caregivers, as people who have been given the fivefold ministry, we neglect to help people get to listen to the word of God for themselves. We continue giving them fish instead of teaching them how to fish. Mm. What mm-hmm. happens is that we don't know how much fish they want, mm-hmm. and therefore sometimes they starve, sometimes they are overfed. Mm. Uh, we keep them busy throughout the week, Monday, Tuesday, all the way to Sunday, keeping them busy mm. so they don't ever get to go to the Bible themselves. And therefore, they start condemning themselves, as you are saying. You learn and not grow weary. You would not be exempted mm. from misunderstanding the Bible mm. j- simply because you, you are not taking time to mm-hmm. just reflect on it and see what God means and that. And uh, then I would like to add, now that you have taken care, most of the items that we have covered is about the heart mm-hmm. matters. Mm. You need also to take care of the body. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You need to, take, to eat healthy food, mm. and healthy food does not necessarily me- mean expensive food. Mm-hmm. You can get protein even from beans. Mm-hmm. It's not necessarily from meat. Mm. You can get from beans. You can learn where, where is this food being sold on wholesale? Mm. Where can I buy bulk instead of learning for one kg, two kg, and all those kind of things? I used to see women groups having just a way of uh, bringing money together, and then they buy a whole sack mm-hmm. of say beans, and then they divide among themselves. They have bought it at a very cheap price. Mm -hmm. Uh, Taking care of the body also includes drinking adequate water, making sure that your uh, your body is watered enough, Mm -hmm. Uh, hygiene, proper hygiene, uh, using our, my lecture I said, using a lot of water inside and outside, Mm -hmm. and then also um, exercise. Mm -hmm. That has been a very big challenge for many of us that that body needs to be kept um, flexible, versatile, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so that you can be able to do any, any work of caregiving that you are required to do. Because most of the time when we don't exercise, we end up getting overweight, and therefore taking care of other people uh, becomes a, a huge burden. Mm-hmm. Actually, they need to take care of the caregiver now because the caregiver has neglected their body. Mm. And then you get all the type of sicknesses mm-hmm. that mm. comes with not neglecting your body. Mm. So those are some of the things that you need to take care of when you are taking care of the body. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Anne, uh, for thank great you. insights uh, on this uh, subject of the care mm. uh, to the caregiver. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Gladys, always thank you for your insights as well. Mm. Uh, really educative, very enlightening. Mm-hmm. And uh, we again appreciate the Bible Society of Kenya for bringing to us this mm-hmm. great series. Yeah. Uh, and tonight, uh, very unique teachings and a very unique insights. And point is, I mean, again, we will all at one point or other have to take care of somebody. Mm-hmm. Now, also, at some point, we'll also need to be taken care of. So let's bear, bear that in mind. And also, when talking to, to, to caregivers, 
You're doing a good job taking mm. care of others. Mm -hmm. Please take care of yourself as well. Yeah. This has been Spotlight. Thank you for watching.
Dira part 2. We? Umeamwaje? Nyonge tena. All right, you exact it's exactly 9 p.m. East African time. A very good evening to you and welcome to Hope TV News Watch on this 28th day of September 2022. My name is Kennedy Kimani. Ati? Ah, uh, leo kabanta flani pale. Nise alazi wale na sawa James ndiko kwanza. Ati? <laughs> Wewe sunipunguza sasa hiyo sauti. Wewe punguza bana. Punguza. Yeah, nice. Asante. Ni wifi ni nini? Eh? Yeah. Please, please. Ah. Ah, ni wenye umezoea. Eh. Ama Leo nitajaribu kukaa hivi. Hivi. Si hivi niko sawa? Ala la la. Okay. Ana. Yeah, yeah. Eh yeah, nakusikia. Hey, tablet rada ni gani? Rada ni gani? <coughs> Ian Pan camera to the right. <laughs> oh, I have been going to talk back. Hello, good people. I hope Muko Salama. Nini wewe? Ah, we are not taking a clip up here. Raza could you get leisure? Nyonga Sasa is even in it. Ah, see you, Lisha, Ulisha, in me. Ipo Siku. Iko yo Siku. Amen. Ah, Santi. Asa, eh. Ah, yeah. Oh, so you English it now. What animal is it? Can you clip? Hello, good people. I hope you are well. It's a few minutes to 9 p.m. and I'm ready to inform you on everything that has happened today in the country, across the region and in the world and also in the sporting world. See you in a few at Hope TV News Watch at the top of the hour. <coughs> eh. Wongo. Ah. Ah, that's what's happening here. Ah. Eh? Ah, that's how. Ah, Santi. Eh. What's not happening today? Hello, good people. It's some few minutes to nine. Hey. 
Ati? Silewi? Eh. Ah, wendiku. Ni hebu ni pesa hivi mimi nitengenezee kitu before niongelee na ni distract hapo. Haya. Harikenia ni ile na iko Cuba. Wewe ni hivyo ndiyo kusasa. Give me a few minutes. <laughs> nice, you are entertaining me. Hello good people it's some few minutes to 9 in the pm and I'm all set to inform you on everything that has been happening uh, during the day in the country in the region and beyond I see you at 9 pm only on Hope TV news watch exactly 9 pm on the dot Uh, take two. Po. <coughs> Tepo tana isa tatu. Na, 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 na. na. Hello, good people. I hope mko salama sana. It is a few minutes to the top of the hour. That is nine. And I'm all set to inform you on everything that has happened in the country, in the region and beyond. Only on Hope TV News Watch, where you look and live. See you at 9 p.m. Uh, another tick. Hello, good people. I hope mko salama sana. Now it's a few minutes to the top of the hour. That is at 9 p.m. And I'm all ready to inform you on everything that has happened in the country.